Hello. No way. Hello. All right, I'm going to finish up with this drunk history because I'm finally getting my buzz. <laughs> um, let's see. But I don't really have a good phone stand to like hold this stupid phone. I've been like putting it up against my laptop, which seems to be just like overheating both of them. But maybe there's nothing else that can be done. Um, yeah, I guess there's nothing else that can be done for right now. Not, it's not coming into my head. <clears throat> the audience has not, uh, psychically delivered it from the future when they see this. All right, so got some chick, chick wine, drink pink, always drink like what uh quote unquote like women's drinks and alcohol just because it's usually less gross than the other kinds women are smart so <clears throat> so where were we neanderthals neanderthals are smart neanderthals have long noses so um yeah anybody with a long nose like I don't know who's a famous person with a long nose, like Adrian Brody, right? Adrian Brody has a long nose. He has a lot of Neanderthal DNA. Um, who else is famous? Like uh, the graduate, you know, the guy, I want to call him Woody Guthrie. Like, you know what I'm talking about. The guy who plays the graduate, Dustin Hoffman. Like, he has a Neanderthaloid nose. So it's not like he looks like a Neanderthal. No, not at all. I mean, not much. He looks like somebody with, you know, whatever, 5% Neanderthal DNA. So a, a true Neanderthal's nose is like, you know, 20 times that size. You know? Is they were very different. A lot of um, scientists like to recon do reconstructions of Neanderthals, and let's see if this thing opens. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of times they just make them look like us, because you know, gotta anthropomorphize everything, gotta sapiomorphize everything. I mean, sapiens is even a total misnomer, because sapiens means wise one. Whereas there's certainly no reason to think that we are wiser than the Neanderthals were. I mean, they managed to live with hunters, you know, live hundreds of thousands of years during an ice age without electricity and without destroying their planet. So that's two for zero right there. Um, not bad from France here. Geographique protégé. <coughs> uh, J.P. Chenet, 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 I don't know, where is it? South of France. Anyway, alcohol aside, did the, did the Neanderthals get faded? Maybe. They definitely medicated, or it seems that they used medication uh, that there were some who died with it, with uh, sickness and disability, and that they seem to have been given uh, some kind of natural uh, aspirin or something like that, or natural penicillin. No, probably not penicillin. If they discovered penicillin, that would be impressive. But yeah, maybe it was like some something similar to penicillin that basically was. Uh, but um, from what we know of Neanderthal, we don't know a whole lot. We have their fossils from Gibraltar in southern, southeastern Spain to Siberia. So basically, 
most of the length and breadth of Eurasia. Um, back when it was really Eurasia, back before Europe and Asia separated, um, with the expansion of the Black Sea <clears throat> and the, the uh, Strait of Bosphorus or whatever it's called, Bosphorus Strait, Bosphorus. And um, so Neanderthal hybrids, you know, like if you look at, if you go to Gobekli Tepe, like that's where you could say civilization started because, I mean, it's kind of a, a very imprecise science, obviously, but that's the earliest place we could point and say these people were very advanced. You know, they had very advanced uh, stonemasonry, seemed to have very advanced astronomy, and, you know, and basically the advent of agriculture and animal husbandry um, all <clears throat> basically branched out from that point, from, from, I mean, like the earliest known wheat is basically from Gobekli Tepe, like it grows wild, at, basically at Gobekli Tepe or a few mountains over. So that's where all this stuff started. Um, and a lot of the, you know, statues there have Neanderthaloid morphology, uh, particularly as, as Andrew Collins, uh, you know, very intelligently noticed the, <coughs> the statues, like the temples themselves at Gobekli Tepe are, you know, um, enclosures, round enclosures of tall stones, st tall uh, stone pillars like at uh, Stonehenge. And each stone is itself an idol, like they call them pillar idols. Um, and this was, you know, there were pillar idols much later in Mesopotamia as well, but um, these are kind of the first pillar idols. And they have, you know, articulated like arms and, and hands and stuff on them. And, but their heads were <clears throat> basically like just a block of limestone, uh, you know, going forward and backward and resting on their, on their shoulders. And um, as Andrew Collins, you know, I think correctly says, this is representative of uh, Neanderthaloid morphology of the elongated heads of Neanderthals themselves and of their hybrid descendants and including the artificial cranial uh, Neanderthalization practiced by their descendants. Let's see, it looks like I'm getting a call, so I'm gonna stop this here.